So welcome to everybody that came today. Thanks for sharing your lunch hour with me. My name is Allison Fulton, and I am the on the manager of onsite advisory here at KWB. Um, I love helping business owners solve problems and make progress towards your goals. So that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, specifically, more specifically, I guess, how you can achieve more cash and greater profit in your business. So here's kind of an outline of what I'll go through today. We're just going to run through all of this real quick. We only have half an hour together, so it'll be brief, but hopefully you'll find it useful. And we can, we're always happy for feedback in the end. So if you have any feedback for us, we'd love to hear it. Um, so today I'll give you a quick overview of KWB and how onsite advisory fits in with the overall mission at the firm, who we are, what we do. Um, we'll discuss the differences between working in and working on your business. That's a super important distinction. Um, we'll talk briefly about business goals, which will drive every decision you make in, with regards to your business. Um, and then we'll discuss some common challenges that business owners face when it comes to spending time working on their business and moving towards their goals. Um, and I'll give you some real world examples as we go of how we've helped some of our clients overcome some of these or make steps toward improvement. Um, and then I'll introduce you at the end to the solution that we've put in place uh, called the profit package that we're using to help some of our clients with these obstacles. Um, and at the end, we'll have plenty of time to answer any questions that you might have as we go through. So this is just a quick housekeeping issue. I'm going to use Menti as we go through the presentation today. So if you want to log in to that www.menti.com, enter the code that's on your screen or use the QR code there. Um, this will allow you to input questions as I go, if you think of them. Um, and there's a couple interactive slides where I'll ask for your feedback. So KWB Accountants and Advisors, who we are, what we do. So we are a CPA firm serving small to medium-sized business owners for 27 years. Uh, we're located in the Edmonton area, but we work with our clients where they are, and we really embrace technology to make that possible, things like Zoom. Um, so we work with clients across Canada. Our mission at KWB is to provide you with great advice that simplifies your accounting experience, improves your business, and helps you reach your goals. So we're really, everything we do comes back to those goals. What are you trying to do and how can we help get you there? And simplifying everything for you along the way and improving your business in the end. So back to our mission. Um, over the years, we've worked with a lot of clients and found overwhelmingly that they really need support that goes beyond just their compliance and tax needs. Um, so with this in mind, we, and with the help of those, that technology that I talked about, so Dex, QBO, other cloud-based pieces of software, we've developed a collection of services that help business owners to utilize their financial information, not just to report on the past, but also to help make them help them make better business decisions every day. And that's what Onsite Advisory is in a nutshell. Um, at Onsite Advisory, we help you shift your focus from working in your business to working on your business. And this allows you to focus on the future and be a little bit more strategic about running your business. So let's touch on that concept of working in versus working on for a minute. Like I said, it's a super important concept to understand. Um, so when you're working in your business, you're working on the day-to-day -day operational tasks and activities that are necessary to keep your business running smoothly. So this is things like serving customers, managing employees, handling administrative tasks, all of those day-to-day -day things that need to get done to run your business. When you're working in your business, you're primarily focused on the immediate task at hand and generating income for the present. So you're working on today's income. When you're working on your business, you're taking a step back from those day-to-day -day tasks and you're focusing on strategic planning, growth, long-term development. So this involves analyzing the overall direction of your business, setting those goals, refining your processes, improving your systems, 
and implementing strategies to position the business for future success. So when you're working on your business, you're focused on building a sustainable and profitable enterprise that generates income, not just for today, but also into the future. So you're working on tomorrow's income. Both of these types of work are really vital to the success of your business. So don't think of it as good work versus bad work. I'm not here to tell you that you never should be working in your business. That's absolutely not realistic. Uh, but those day-to-day -day tasks of working in your business are a lot easier to delegate to others than the more strategic tasks of working on your business. Those things are almost impossible to hand off to anyone that's not immediately involved in the decision-making processes for your business. So it really needs to be you or co-managers, co-owners of the business doing that type of work. So it's really important for that reason that you get into a regular rhythm for focusing on that type of work and get into the habit of doing it in whatever interval is right for you. So this is my first little poll for you. Just let me know right now where you're at, where we're starting from today. Not a big crowd out there, but I'll wait for two. There we go. <laughs> so quarterly and randomly when I have time. Not a surprise at all. Um, lots of people do it randomly. And that is perfectly all right if it works for you and if you're really doing it randomly. The, the risk, of course, with doing it randomly is that it's just never going to come to the top of your list. So talking a little bit about those goals, setting goals is, is really important. It's kind of the first thing that you need to do when you're starting to think about working on your business. It's really hard to move forward unless you know where you're trying to go. So we've centered our presentation today on more cash and greater profit. Those are really two common, almost universal goals with business owners. But really what we're talking about here is just helping you move towards those goals, whatever they are. So everyone's goals are different and there's no one right answer here. Whatever your goals are, are it's the right answer for you, right? So um, I have a list here of some common goals that we hear a lot from clients. So having, of course, more cash. There's never enough cash. <laughs> we want to be managing that cash effectively too, right? So we don't want to have too little cash where you're stressed out about making payroll next week all the time or paying your bills on time. Um, we also don't want to have too much cash sitting in the bank and not being put to good use. So it's a fine line and it's always something that needs to be actively managed. Um, greater profit, of course, we all want to earn more. We all want to keep more of those earnings after we pay for our expenses. Um, more independence from their business is also a big one. So uh, a lot of business owners, especially owner operators, uh, feel really stuck in the running, in the working in their business, and they want a little bit more independence for their business to run without them having to show up every day and being able to take some time off to spend with themselves or their family is super important to them. Um, more opportunity would just be about finding better opportunities for the business, whether that be in the same direction that the business has been going for a while or finding new directions that might be um, allow the business to grow in a new way. And then increasing visibility of the business and reputation of the business. So just growing the general popularity of the business. Um, so if you don't have clearly established goals, this is your starting point. You need to get clear on what exactly it is you're working towards and make sure that you're on the same page about this as all of the other key decision makers in the business. There's nothing more frustrating than having multiple people pulling on the rope in different directions. So um, this is definitely your starting point. We can help with this, of course. Um, it's not really the topic of today's um, presentation, but super important. So if you need help with that strategic goal setting, definitely reach out. So here's my next poll for you. Remember, there's no wrong answer. What is your number one goal that you're working towards in your business right now? So revenue, not a surprise at all, 
that, that's on everybody's list for sure. Increased sales, increased revenue. And then conversely, decreasing costs to retain as much of that in our own pockets as we can. So once you have your goals set, you're all, it's never gonna be cut and dry. It's never as simple as it kind of seems like it should be at the beginning. <laughs> um, once you start working towards your goals, you're always going to come across some challenges along the way. That's life, right? Um, we've heard a lot over the years about some challenges that our clients face. So we're gonna dive in a little bit in that. Um, so I have a little bit of a list here. Time, of course, there's never enough time in the day, um, either for all the business tasks you wanna do or to take some time off once in a while <laughs> would be nice as well. Um, so experience, uh, a lot of business owners are really great at what they got into business to do, which is why they got into business to do it, but they may lack experience with another aspect uh, of running a business. So on, um, they might lack experience with sales, lack experience with HR management, financial information, all of those kind of things. They might lack some experience. And then knowledge is in that same vein. They may, you know, lots of business owners never went to business school. So they lack knowledge in certain areas. So one good example would be in the drivers of profit and cash flow, which we're going to talk a little bit about today. Um, lacking objectivity can be a one that comes up fairly often when you're in the weeds and you're in the details of your business every day, sometimes you lack a little bit of objectivity. It can be really valuable to have someone once in a while to sound things off of that's going to challenge your way of thinking on some things, whether that be a business partner, a, a mentor of some sort, something like that. Um, and then in that same vein, identifying opportunities. Sometimes they're sitting right in front of you and you're just kind of not seeing them because you're stuck in the weeds of your business. So it's important to step back once in a while and look at things from a little bit different perspective. So again, what's your biggest challenge right now that you're facing that's keeping you from progressing towards those goals? <laughs> yeah I think that's probably number one on everybody's list and market conditions yeah so some of those things that you can't control you're just dealing with the market conditions all right so looking at that universal one of time um, one of the, like I said, it's universal. I think everybody has it on their list and it's usually right near the top. <laughs> There's no magic wand here, but there are some strategies available that you can use to create more time for whatever you need it for. Um, how may, uh, how often have you spent, you know, working evenings and weekend, weekends, getting ready for year end, getting your books up to date, getting things caught up so you can hand them over to the accountant? Uh, there's lots of tools available today that can help digitize your operations and automate some of those processes for you. And it, they can be really valuable in giving you some time back. Um, spending time evaluating your current team can be also a really useful exercise for a number of reasons. But one of them is to identify areas where you may be able to delegate some more work. So like I said at the beginning, those tasks of working in your business are a lot easier to delegate. So if you can delegate some of those out to your team, um, that might give you a little more time to work on your business or take a day off. <laughs> That's also equally important. Um, and then efficiency. So spending time evaluating your processes and, your, and the way you're doing things. Um, just to make sure once in a while that you're still doing things in the best way possible, taking advantage of any new technology that's available um, and doing things in the most efficient manner that can have a huge impact on your time. So this year, we spent some time working with a client that runs a medical practice to redesign some of their internal processes. So they're not having to manually process payments going out to the clinic physicians every month. Um, this saved the clinic owner, who is also a busy physician himself, 
hours each week, literal, literal hours each week that he can now spend on more important things like patient care or taking some time off, um, which he, he really needs to do. So, so that was really powerful to see what, what a, a time investment of a little bit of rejigging how you're doing things can really pay off in the end. Um, so on the experience and knowledge side of things, uh, many businesses, like I said, many business owners are really great at what they do. That's why they got into business in the first place. Um, but running a business is a pretty well-rounded experience and not everybody is good at every part naturally, um, nor do they have the knowledge, right? That that they, these things are not inborn <laughs> in, in a lot of us. So um, looking at financial statements specifically can be really overwhelming. What do all these numbers mean? And more importantly, what do we do with them? Now that we've looked at them, what do we do next? So we always advise that the best practice when it comes to looking at your financial information is to be looking at it at least monthly, um, sometimes more often, depending on what's going on. Uh, this of course requires that your books and records are up to date. So you need to have things up to date and you need to have those processes in place to keep them up to date in order to give you that timely information to be looking at. Um, looking at your financial information once a year, six months after the year end, it's too late at that point to do anything really useful other than file your taxes with that information. Once you have things up to date and you're looking at it regularly, then that's when you can begin to monitor your progress towards your goals. You can put a budget in place to compare what's actually happening against what you thought would happen. There's a lot of really meaningful um, learning that can happen when you do that. You can spot opportunities for improvement and start to make strategic adjustments along the way. So whether you're comparing, like I said, the current information to a budget or a previous period, going looking at your PL monthly and going line by line and thinking about why things are different than you thought they were going to be or different than what they were last year can really start to stimulate some really useful discussion and thought and help you guide the business in real time. So we recently worked with a client to get their records. They were far behind. So we helped get them up to date and we implemented some processes to keep help them stay that way. So um, this helped them qualify for some really significant bank financing. And as a part of that, they have a obligation to the bank to report monthly um, within 20 days of each month end. So they're able to keep up with that reporting, um, be on top of whether they're on side with their bank covenants or not. Um, and it's given them a huge injection of working capital that they can now go and use to grow their business. Uh, another really kind of important thing to keep in mind is those profit and loss statements and balance sheets that you're used to seeing, they can be really overwhelming. So sometimes it's helpful to step away from the numbers and look at things from a little bit of a different perspective. Um, so here we have a graph showing the historical revenues, gross and operating profits and retained earnings for a company. And we're also projecting those into the future using the budget that they had built. Um, this gives the key decision makers a real quick snapshot of where they've been over the last year and where they think they're going over the next year. So we can see that they're planning for revenue to keep increasing. Everything else is increasing too, but on a little bit lower slope. So they're keeping more of their profits in their, in their bank account at the end of the day. This is a statement of profitability for quarter one of this year for a company. Um, and we can see here, we put the numbers in and we can present it in a different way to really quickly show us, okay, what was the break even point? How much did we exceed that by? Um, how, what's the difference going forward? You can see as they would have made more revenue in the period. They're keeping the gap between here is getting wider as we go up the graph. So they're keeping more of those profits in their pocket because they've already paid for their fixed costs. So just pivoting your view on things can be really valuable. 
here's another example of cash flow. Cash flow can be a really confusing thing for many business owners to wrap their head around. How can we be profitable and still not have any money in the bank is a question that we hear quite a bit. So as we can see here, this company had net income of just over 150,000 for the year. Um, that's where we are here. And it's really clear to see what happened to all, to all the cash after that. So they had 151,000 left over after paying for all their expenses. They paid off some taxes, stretched out their accounts payable cycle a little bit, and then paid off some other liabilities. And then what really put them into the negative was they, they made a significant investment in their inventory during the quarter. This was a planned initiative. Um, they had to take financing to be able to do it but it was done with thought and on purpose. <laughs> so, but this gives you a really good um, visual picture of what happened to your cash during the period in time. So I'm gonna to touch briefly here on the four drivers of profit. I have my eye on the clock. Hopefully I won't keep you too much past 12.30, uh, but I do wanna have some time for questions at the end. So the four drivers of profit are price, volume, and then your direct costs and your overhead costs. Um, so these are the four factors that you can kind of pull on to increase your profits. And sometimes your initial instinct might be, well, I just need to raise my prices or I need to sell more, I need to sell higher volume. Um, but sometimes what you first think of isn't what's going to affect your numbers the in the most efficient manner. So here we have an example. We can see based on this company's financial information, their goal, they were in a loss, $14,000 loss for quarter one. Their goal is to get up to a $10,000 gain. So what could they have done to reach that goal? We can see here, they would have had to sell 182% more to reach that goal. Well, that's a pretty lofty marching orders. Um, Similarly, they would have had to decrease their fixed expenses by 390%, not possible. So those two aren't really achievable factors. Um, variable expenses decreased by 23%. That's also a pretty tall order. So we're, we're up looking at the price and the variable cost of sales as kind of realistic options. Um, in talking with the business owner, he felt that he couldn't really sneak much more out of his cost of sales. He had already kind of negotiated as best he could with all of his suppliers. So we're left with, okay, well, you need to increase your prices. He thinks, okay, I can raise my prices by 5%, but that's going to mean that I'm going to lose volume. So I'm going to decrease my volume by 20% as a result of that 5% increase. We can still see that he making those two changes would still have been profitable for the quarter. So as a quick, of course, there's always more factors involved in these decisions, but as a quick example, it would have been worth increasing his prices by 5% and losing 20% of his customers. He still would have been in a better position than in a $14,000 loss. Three drivers of cash flow. So payables, inventory, receivables, collectively, these are known as your working capital. So from the day that you order your inventory to the day that you make the sale and collect on that sale, that is your working capital cycle. So affecting these three factors can help to increase your cash. So stretching out the amount of time it takes to pay your payables, um, reducing the amount of time you're holding that inventory and reducing the amount of time it takes to collect on your sales will increase cash flow collectively. So here we can see this company was in a loss for the month of March. They wanna see what it would have taken to get them cash positive. Um, we can then play with these factors to say, okay, well, if you, if you collect five days faster, pay six days later and reduce your inventory carrying time by eight days, you're now just about cash neutral. So of course, that's all easier said than done. There's a lot of conversation that needs to happen about how are we going to do that? What are we going to do to make that happen? But once you know 
which factor you want to focus on, then you can start to have some meaningful discussions around that. So this is the solution that we've put together to help our clients overcome some of these challenges and move them in a more meaningful manner towards their goals. Um, our profit package includes collaborative advisory meetings periodically. Some clients we meet with monthly, some we meet with quarterly. Um, we can customize the package that works best for you. Um, and then support to support those advisory meetings, we provided an enhanced, excuse me, my mouth is going faster than my brain, <laughs> um, enhanced financial reporting. So some of those graphs that I showed you, um, displaying your financial information in a different way to help increase understanding for all of the users of the financial statements. And then, of course, we're there throughout the process with ongoing support for you. Those collaborative advisory meetings will provide you dedicated time to work on your business. We'll focus on learning about those profit and cash flow drivers, help you make better business decisions, identify opportunities for improvement, focus your efforts on those factors that are going to give you more bang for your time investment um, and help you achieve results. In the enhanced financial reporting, some of the things that we can do is track some key production indicators for your business. So it can be a bit of a project to figure out which key production indicators you want to watch. But once they have, we have those in place, we can build those into the reporting. So they're front of mind every month or every quarter. Um, we can keep an eye on your break even points, keep a really good eye on your cash flow, help you spot trends. Um, do those goal seek exercises where we're saying, okay, if we do this and we do this, what's it gonna look like down the road? Um, and we can monitor your progress with you along the way. 